My God, it's been a long week for me and Jim. No introduction. We're getting to the first fight. Ramoska, Nathan Fletcher, who you got? Nobody. Not betting on the final. <laughs> okay. All right. If I if I had to pick, I I can't buy into a guy coming off a broken leg. I, I just can't. And it's too short a time. I know it wasn't a bad break. So, uh, yeah, if anything, I'd look to fade Fletcher. But uh, I don't like the lines. I don't like the fighters. It's a finale fight. I have no interest in betting it whatsoever. It's I, it's not even a finale. Like, like, like oh, that's I mean, true. Like, yeah, it is. Like, it's, just, it's yeah. a showcase of two guys that couldn't continue on in the it's competition because they got hurt. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a really weird fight. I actually kind of like Ramoska in it when um, I like his style. I actually think the guy might have. I, he, he here's here's what's going good for him for a potential little UFC run. He's a really exciting fighter. He could put on a good show. Um, yeah. So uh, he had the orbital, or they didn't say orbital, but face injury, yeah. and he couldn't continue. In the, um, I like his striking. I think his striking and his volume are pretty good. I saw Fletcher make some big mistakes in the grappling, and that's supposed to be his strong suit. Um, so if your strong suit's grappling and – kind of fall off the top and, you know, kind of get reversed, done some things. I'm not really there. Now, if he shirt up those things and maybe the broken leg had something to do with it, maybe. But um, again, I'm not betting this with my own money, but I would lead uh, Ramoska a little bit in that mm. one. Uh, I'm glad we waited until after weigh-ins uh, to see this one. Um, I think the biggest miracle is that this fight is still happening. Andre Petrovsky mm. and Dylan Budka. Um, I don't put as much into weigh-ins as most people do. But even I have to say, yikes, Dylan Budka. Uh, no way you can play him after after what we saw earlier today, right? No, no. No way you can play him at all. It, <laughs> even if, if he rehydrates somewhat, once his body starts burning uh, water and calories, we just don't know what kind of deficit he's at. Um, everybody with the over two and a half is shaking in their boots right now. So, yeah. You know, this is why sometimes we like waiting a little bit during the week and seeing him because – I could see just an absolute death gas from Bunker. Now, so could Petrosky, but I think Petrosky has him covered as far as being on the ground. I don't see Bunker being able to stop any of Petrosky's takedowns. I hope the dreaded UFC don't wrestle thing comes into play here. I don't think it will. I don't know if Petrosky has that ability, but I could very easily see Petrosky in round two and three dominating this and Bunker just having nothing left. Well, you know who else? We'll see if it still happens. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know who else isn't very good at striking? Dylan Budka. Dylan Budka. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Jet Jones. Uh, this is the only person uh, that that Dylan Budka has knocked out. Um, uh, he's two and eleven. Uh, I will do my quick rant on Chad H uh, Hanacomb. So Chad Hanacomb and Dylan Budka put on the worst fight in Contender Series history. Hanacomb tests positive for cocaine. A little bit later after the fight, the story is he enjoyed Vegas a lot. Uh, the fight was awful. Dana felt bad for Budka. Told Budka you can come back on Contender Series, but instead gave him a fight against Cesar Almeida where he – Pushed Cesar Almeida against the fence for the entire first round. I believe was credited with a strike, mm -hmm. like one strike. He tried to do it again in the second round. Almeida just blasts him in the side of the head. Um, I don't think Budka. I think his striking's terrible. His cardio was awful, and uh, you know he he fought this Dan Stevenson at heavyweight. And, you know, got the submission, but this Dan Stevens is two and four. And then uh, contender series, he's down to like at 185. This guy can't figure out his weight division, Jim. Like, no wonder he's having weight cutting issues. He's like, am I am I at 205 or 185? Or is there a made up division I need to hit? Um, Budka just got disaster written all over him. I liked what Petrosky did against Fremd. Was it boring? Yeah. But in the betting space, I like knowing what I'm going to get from a guy. Yeah. And I think we're going to get a Petrosky who isn't scared to work the wrestling. This was a guy who, you know, lost to Pereira and Malcoon. He needed a win. Like, yeah. like forget the style points. He needed a win. He went out and did it, took Frem down and held him down. I think he can do that against Bud Kitts, Petrosky or, or nothing uh, on that one. Our girl, Vanessa Demopoulos, making her triumphant split decision return against Jacqueline Amore. And what do you got? I think she's back to another split decision. Win or lose, it's back to another split decision. And if it's going to be a split decision, I'm taking the plus three and a half on Vanessa a lot. Ooh, oh, you're going spread? So, so not 
not over rounds, not money line, the spread, right? I think this is one. I know the judging has been rough, but this is going to take her losing by finish, which hasn't happened. <laughs> That's a good point. It hasn't happened. It, grappling in overtime, okay, but she that doesn't count. She doesn't get finished. So I mean, the Amorum is way better than we think she is on the ground, but she's not knocking out. Okay, Vanessa. I think this is where the plus one plus three and a half in a long time that we can actually play and have pretty good faith. All we need is one round. Why need judge a scorecard give us one round for Vanessa? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just I, I, Amorum I think is a front runner, um, and I think Vanessa is going to get stronger as this fight goes on. Yeah, so you know, she's coming off of these two wins, she catches McKenna in an arm bar, and then, you know, she beat Ruiz with ground and pound, but it was because Ruiz got tired, and Demopolis is not going to get tired in the third, and Demopolis is good on the ground. She's not going to get in an arm bar, and so well, it is interesting that Jacqueline Amore lost to Sam Hughes. To me, Sam Hughes and Vanessa Demopolis have a lot of the same characteristics. They're yeah. going to push forward. They're not going to give up. They're not going to get tired. You're not going to, you know, <laughs> and Demopolis, what, what do I say? Dem Vanessa Demopolis has the best move in all of UFC. It's not a strike. It's not a kick. It's not a submission. It's jumping up at the end of rounds and putting your hands in the air when you've just spent the last minute on your back. And the judge is like, oh, you got to love her. Um, but I, 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 Vanessa is going to be better on the feet. And it, the worst thing that a morum can do, I think, might actually be get on top of Vanessa because Vanessa wins all of those exchanges. Just She's so active, rabbit She's active is in elbows, and the judge is like, "Look how active she is." Yeah, there's, I, I don't see a way you can lay that big a price on a morum. That's a parlay buster if I've ever seen yeah. it. So I mean, she's Vanessa's up to plus two fifty. A lot of people are seeing the same things that we see, and I know the line just keeps on going. Um, I'm still have no interest in the money line before two and a half minutes of the first round. Okay. You're going to get a better line on Vanessa two and a half minutes. of Cause I think, I think Amorum gets the takedown early. I just don't think she finishes. If she gets a takedown right off the bat, we're going to watch that line tick up. Yeah. It yeah. gets the four or 500. Now you got my interest. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. If you guys could hit the like button, leave us a comment below. Tell us who you like. Tell us if you agree or disagree with any of the takes. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Let's talk Gabriel Santos and Giza. Who are you liking this one? Gabriel Santos. What a curious case. Is this one of those where we're like, wow, I mean, came on the scene, eh, looked tough, looked good. He's on the bad end of a bad knockout from Lerone Murphy and De er, from uh, David Onama. Oh, but took a lot of time away. Okay, 6-24, 23. That's a... Uh, well you know, over I here. Think, yeah, I think his chin is going to be okay. And I'm just not impressed with Yiza. I don't think he's one of these guys you can hang your hat on. You want to talk about a padded record. My God, the guys that this guy has fought. Uh, just look at his record compared to who he was fighting. And you can tell what the promotion wanted to happen there. Okay. Will <laughs> Will Wars. <laughs> It's the, the long lost cousin of the MILF wars. Uh. <laughs> it's just a joke. So, you know, the question is, can Gabriel's chin hold up? Uh, I don't think he's going to be hit nearly as hard as he did against David Onama. So I like Santos in this spot. It's not a bet for me. Uh, the number's not knocking my socks off. Uh, it's got to be parlayed with something. So it'll probably be a pass, but. For sake of picking, I'll pick Santos to get a W in this one. He's too. Yeah, I need to see some patience uh, from Santos. He he almost had Onama in quite a few submission attempts. And what do you always say? Position over submission. That's and right. he just got way, way too hasty and just overzealous. He, we know he can strike. We know he can, you know, we, we know he can get, get he, you know, he's got these rear naked chokes, but he's also got, you know, strikes. He's he's a finisher. It, we've seen it, but he's got to settle into the fight. I'm with you. Not winning on road to UFC and then coming back <laughs> and and getting there on road to, to UFC. I'm with you that the padded record 
is is not very good. Uh, I'm not impressed with really much of anything that Yiza does. I don't see where he has a big advantage, to be honest. That's the asterisk is if if Santos is in control of himself. It doesn't get too wild and crazy. If he does, we saw him make mistakes against Onama, and he got finished. Mm -hmm. So as long as he they reel him in a little bit and just say, calm down, let the fight come to you, I I, I think he can get the finish. I'm also taking unders in this one because it's a road to UFC fight, and most road to UFC fighters, these, these UFC fights, they just end up not going the distance because uh, these guys are kill or be killed. So Santos, maybe under. Santos inside the distance uh, might be a good one. Uh, Andre Lima, Felipe Dos Santos, of course, uh, every, everybody talks about Andre Lima, you know, okay. He got bit. Um, oh, the great leg kicks against, uh, Mitchell Post. So I, I see an overrated fighter here. What do you see? I agree. Uh, Mitch did everything he possibly could do to lose that fight. <laughs> if he made a couple game plan adjustments in that fight, he gives Andre a much harder time, much harder time. And I remember we watched that one live and it was just so evident that, he had the worst game plan, froze in the ring, stood in front of him. I mean, didn't even look like he saw the leg kicks coming. Just ate every single one of them. No and adjustments. Screaming. Like, yeah, you said it. Check one. Just check one. <laughs> one, yeah. please. And then he'll stop doing it as much. Just one. Um, I don't know about this fight. I, I want to take the over two and a half. Because I really don't want to pick a side because I don't think Lima's that great. I don't think Dos Santos is that great either. Uh, he's had a bit of a rough run from what he shows. I just, eh, you know, the loss against Manel Cape, it's, it's expected. The Altamirano split, I, I think we still disagree on, on Altamirano. I, I understood what you said, thinking he's maybe better. I still don't think he's that good. Um, the fact that that was a split, I think, is very concerning uh, to me. So I was looking at the over two and a half, but, you know, Dos Santos has been wobbled. That's the thing that worries me about this and taking him to fade Lima. Um, I think he could get clipped. Now we have seen with these UFC gloves, you get one chance for a knockout. And if the guy doesn't go all the way out, the fights go in the distance. So this could be exactly what we see is so Dos Santos get wobbled in the first round. He doesn't get finished. And then I could see him working in if Andre's cardio starts going away. Andre looked good on the scales. Um, no weight issues whatsoever. Kind of playing it up a little bit. Really can't get anywhere on a side on this, but I am all for feeding Andre Lehman when the time is right. I just don't know if it's now. I think you're over is a fine play. Um, you know, uh, this guy went to decision on contender series and went to decision against Mitch Raposo. And to be honest, even though with all those light kicks, that fight wasn't close to being finished. Mm -hmm. Um you know, okay, biting. You got me there. Uh, but Felipe Dos Santos, I like this cardio against Altamirano. This guy went to decision against against Manel, uh, Manel Cape. Um, I, I I like Dos Santos a, a little bit on there, but I, I I think you're fine with the over. This is the, the I think this is the like the the longest reach that Lima will have faced. Like so, yeah. Dos Santos is going to have a really good long reach. I just don't think Lima's finishing guys at this level. When you can't get Mitch Raposo out of there, um, now I just don't think you're going to be able to. Dos Santos is not going to sit there and eat those kicks. Um, at the same time, I like Lima's cardio. I like his durability. Um, you know, he does, he has really good movement. He's not sloppy. I just don't, I don't know. I think he's fairly limited. I think he's got a, a fairly low ceiling. I, I would lean Dos Santos, but I like your overplay um, in there. I think the fight okay. goes the distance. Like you said, man, these new gloves, a lot of these fights, man, if it doesn't get finished in the first round, it's just the toast. You're going, you're going the distance. We're seeing on a contender series as well. Like some of these fights, it's like, oh, it screams under, and then bang, all of a sudden, you know, we're to decision. So uh, one fight that probably is not going to go the distance, Isaac Dolgarian and uh, Brandon Moreau. Come on, Jim, do it. You won't do, do I have it. The do you have the onion? <laughs> Uh, please don't. Hell please, no. please don't. Please don't bet Brandon Burrow. No, that's not. That's not happening. Uh, here's the thing. This fight's probably going to end because it doesn't matter what kind of gloves you have while you're choking somebody unconscious. <laughs> and I think that's how this is going to end. It's probably going to end by Isaac rear naked choke early, early. Okay. He, he's going to get the wrestling going. He's going to get him down to the ground. He's got a really slick back take. Brandon Burrow. I don't know why they're putting him in this spot. This is. 
this is what drives me nuts about the UFC is you have Isaac Dolgarian, and I understand you want to build him up with a win, but does a win over Brandon Moreau build you up? Mm-hmm. It's just a waste. And we know with these fighters, they have a limited career. If you act, asked Isaac Dolgarian who he'd rather fight, Brandon Marote or like a top 15 guy, <laughs> who do you think he's choosing? Dolgarian, like, Dolgarian can fight a top 15 guy next week. I know. When, 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 this, when he, when he, he'll be on no when, check. Okay, he'll, he'll be on no check. Yes, um, you're going to be on the alternate list. Pull one of those seven-day swings. Yeah, yeah, Brandon Moreau, yeah, Brandon Moreau might be one of the worst fighters on the UFC roster. Uh, they bring him in. <laughs> McKinney knocked him out in 20 seconds. Not like McKinney's like the be-all, end-all as well. Mm. So, uh, All right, we've talked enough about Dolgarian yeah, and Brandon Moreau from that one. Uh, this fight I'm, I'm interested in. Rong Zhu and Chris Padilla. What do you like in this one? See a lot of people liking Chris Padilla. Thing is, I think Rong Zhu is a legit uh, prospect. I do, I do think he's a legit prospect from Korea, China. Is he China or Korea? China, right? Yeah, China. Um, I heard, I heard Cody, um, Cody Saftik saying where, that where he comes from is at this Embo Fight Club. They said mm-hmm. they literally like take orphans and they're just like, we're just gonna treat teach you how to fight this is going to be your life and we're going to turn it into something positive and then we're going to manage you so i i didn't know that uh that that's where wrong you came from but yeah kind of an interesting uh backstory there that uh cody safta uh, mentioned on his show i think he's legit i i do think he's legit i think he's got a good all-around game padilla you know he's another one of these guys that came in relatively unknown really don't know what we're going to get from him yet Uh, it's just I'm done buying into this, these debuts. And then they come back for a second fight. They look totally different. And then the third fight, you're trying to figure out which one you got. <laughs> you get the first version. Then they fight a fourth time. You get the fourth version. <laughs> it's like, I can't, I can't place it. To me, there's, there's not enough read for myself to bet on Padilla here. Um, and I think Rongju's legit. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think he can work this. Again, I don't see this being an insta finish. I think Padilla is good enough to survive. Uh, the win against James Lontop. Look, James Lontop stinks. Okay, he stinks. Justin James, he stinks. Uh, who the heck are these other two? I don't. Guys? I, I don't. I don't know these other guys. I All really right. don't. So uh, I just, I, I can't buy into it. So it's wrong, Zhu, for nothing for me. I think he's parlayable. Yeah, thirty fights, and he's only what twenty four. So here's what I liked about I just just watching his um. You know his his road to UFC. So okay, loses to Baja Mondays, uh, beats Brandon Jenkins or Rodrigo Barton. He was really young then. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's barely twenty one years old. Um, I really liked. I I went back just this last fight. I went back and watched. I loved his patience. He set up everything for this third round finish. He didn't get too, he didn't get uh, you know too over anxious. He didn't get caught with anything. He really just worked this guy and worked this guy and worked this guy and controlled the entire pace of the fight. It was a very patient mature performance. I think this guy might be a little bit different than a lot of the road to UFC guys coming out. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> if he shows that kind of patience and maturity, I think he does get the better of Padilla. I- I'm not putting a whole lot of stock into the James <laughs> Lontop because you and I both, when we watched Lontop on Contender Series, we were just like, this is a fade alert um, if I've ever seen it. And sure enough, Lontop has been a fade. But I do give Padilla credit. Um Lontop kept making the same mistake in the first round. Padilla was smart enough to realize it, smart enough to take advantage of it. So I, that is impressive because that shows fight IQ that a lot of other guys would not have picked up on. Um, so, you know, the Justin Janes, it is what it is, but credit to him. Knocked him out. Uh, credit to him for over these two other guys. He does what he's supposed to do. He gets finishes. So I like Padilla, but I like Rong, I like Rong Zhu. I think this might be a very interesting um kind of new new path in the UFC for him. Now it's minus 250. So yeah, it is it is kind of a parlay piece. I think Rogzud gets the better of Padilla on this one, but um I can't I can't, I yeah, it's parlayable. I'm I'm I I I'm going to be a believer uh, in Rong Zhu and if I'm wrong about Rong Zhu then uh Padilla then th- that means we do have to start taking Padilla pretty serious. So uh Trevor Peak and you know Ash Moose, what's your take on uh, Peak and Ash Moose? Can sum this up pretty simple here. Trevor Peak's a favorite. 
you're not going to bet Trevor Peak as a favorite. It's that simple. He is the epitome of an underdog fighter, isn't he? He's an underdog story. He's an underdog fighter the way he fights. This is his second camp with Trevor Whitman. So I have no interest in betting this fight till I see it, as far as the side goes. Um, very curious if the second fight camp with Trevor Whitman, we're going to start seeing changes to Trevor Peak. I think that his body has started to go through changes just training with Trevor Whitman. And looking at the weigh-ins, he looked like he was a little less bulky muscle, a little leaner, a little thinner in the shoulders, maybe a little bit more flexibility, maybe some cleaner striking comes from that, as opposed to just being this muscle monster that swings. That being said, Ajmu's most certainly, as we know right now, is the better technical striker. Uh, we know both of these guys are tough as nails, both of them. Uh, again, the over two and a half. I know it's going to be sweaty. There'll be a spot where somebody gets wobbled in the first, but if it starts the second, it's going the distance. They're going to be tired. They're going to be wailing on each other. They're going to be leaning up against the fence. Trevor Peak is going to go for a rear naked choke and go flying off of you know, like he does every fight. <laughs> so I want to see the improvements for Peak, but I have to see this fight with my own eyes before I put my money on it. If Peak looks like he has really improved, we might be looking back at that, you know, knockout of Sam Patterson saying it really was a fluke because Patterson's looked damn good since. I know the competition hasn't been great, but he's looked good. Um, so I'm going to watch this live very soon. And if I see the same old Trevor Peak, I'm all over Ash Moose as soon as I can. If I see improvements, I think we let it ride a little bit and see if he starts to pull away. Uh, I've got this fight to go the distance. I, and I, I've just seen, oh, it's peak. It's Ash Moose. Oh, it's strikers. Oh, it's got to be an early finish. And I'm getting almost like what? Minus 140, minus 130. Yeah. This thing to go the dif di distance. Uh, newsflash, uh, Trevor Peak has gone the distance in yes. his last three UFC fights against Mariscal, against Yaya, who is atrocious. Mm -hmm. I've said Muhammad Yaya was one of the worst fighters I've ever watched film on in the last few years, and he has proven that. Yes. And yet somehow Trevor <laughs> Peak couldn't get him out of there. Uh, then he goes a distance. Charlie Charlie Campbell. Um, I think Peak and Ashmus are kind of similar into that. You're going to get these big bursts of energy and then big moments of lull, like blah blah blah, blah, blah and then step back, step back, step back, blah, 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 then step back and step back. And like you said, this thing gets out of the first round. I, these two gloves and uh, it, it just screams to go over, especially when I think most people are liking the under on it that we've, I, we've seen time and time again. I go back to that. Abus uh, Magomedov fight where it was, who was he fight? Isatar. We were like, Oh, it's got to go over. And then four minutes in the, or we were like, it's got to go under four minutes into the fight. We were like, this is going the distance. And then like <laughs> we have fooled again by it. Uh, so Peak and Ash Moose. No, no, no. You're not. You're not tricking me into betting an under on this one. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Is there a chance that Ash Moose somehow attempts some wrestling because Peak is not very good? Oh, very much so. At, at it, I think we could yeah. see some clinch and some wrestling, which would mm -hmm. eat valuable time off the clock uh, for an over. So, over is the only way. I don't care who wins this one. Uh, Matt Schnell and uh, Cody Durden, who if I, 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 am I hearing this right? That he just didn't bring him supposedly. It, uh, I see. Yeah, like he, he just brought his girlfriend. <laughs> Do I, don't, I don't buy into that. Type you of don't, stuff. you, you, you would know more about this kind of situation. So what, what the story is that Cody Dern just packed up him and his girlfriend, very yeah. Mike Perry ask Bonnie and Clyde, uh, we're just going in this, you and me, babe. Uh, no, I don't need a corner man. <laughs> And let's be honest, against match now, you probably don't need a corner man. You're either going to get taken down and submitted or you're going to knock him out. So you don't need a corner man to tell mm -hmm. you don't get taken down by match now to try and hit him hard on the chin. Uh, so I I can't verify that. Those are just the, the, the stories. That's what we're though. hearing. That's what we're yes. hearing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what is it? Schnell by decision or Durden by knockout? Well, Cody certainly looks like he took this on short notice after seeing <laughs> He certainly does. Um, it's not egregious, but you can hundred percent tell this is not like natural weight. Okay. As as that goes. Um, this is, I know we're going on rants about fights going over, right? 
this is what I'm not interested in to go to goes the distance. Yeah, I me, either. Um, me either. I think somebody gets finished in this, and it's either going to be Durden by knockout or Schnell by submission. Um, I just can't get over Matt Schnell's chin. I can't. Uh, Cody Durden, I'm sure, has the cardio enough to fight Matt Schnell. Matt Schnell is not going to power wrestle Cody and wear on his gas tank. It's probably going to end up being standing unless Schnell is shooting the takedowns. If I'm Cody, I have no problem standing with Matt Schnell. Like, why? Okay. If you're Cody, why would you wrestle? To me, you're giving you Schnell the option to get his submission. Agreed. Right? So <laughs> Agreed. I, I'm yeah. not worried about his cardio because wrestling would be the thing that's going to tire him out. Um, so I still think – I think Cody comes in here and sparks Matt Schnell. I do. Uh, but, yes, I will have a piece of this fight not to go the distance because um, both of these guys are damaged goods going into this fight. Big doubt. Uh uh, we got three fights to break down. Do want to tell you guys. Uh, not going to promote uh, UFC play or anything. Going to promote college football. Uh, college football plays have just been a really, really nice diamond in the rough for us. Uh, we went thirteen and four last year in college football. Our strategy is one play a week. Mm-hmm. That's what we get. We get our best play, and it's always a team total. We went thirteen and four last year. And we're already one to zero after last week's uh, win. So uh, we faded them, Colorado Buffaloes, with the North Dakota State team total over. We get there late, and we got a spot circled uh, that I just love. So we keep college football very, very simple, and it's resulted in the number one percentage and the number one ROI um, the last two years. Uh, wager talk. We're not number one in units because we only put out one play a week. But I'll happily take that number one ROI spot. Uh, so we'll we'll keep riding that. So um, that game is Saturday night. So if you're watching this, you probably have plenty of time to go get that in. Put it up for only fifteen dollars at wagertalk.com. Uh, take advantage of our college football. All right, uh, let's get into our boy Steve Garcia just coming through in the clutch and cashing the Garcia by KO uh, props. We were on him the last couple times and. Tell this guy wins, man. If he's winning a fight, yeah. he's knocking he's knocking somebody out. Can he do it again against Kyle Nelson, Jim? Well, Steve Garcia has the kryptonite to the new gloves. I don't think that means anything to Steve Garcia. Uh, might even help him for all we know at this point. <laughs> um, Kyle Nelson's luck has to run out at some point. He comes in two and a half pounds heavy. He's doing his interview with his daughter. That's never something that we like. We want you focused on the fight, not your family hanging around while daddy's about to get into a fist fight. Not the mental space I would want to be. And then to see the weight miss as well. I have big questions about what's going on behind the scenes. All right, with Nelson. Uh, same thing is though, Steve gets clipped. Could he get clipped every fight? Kyle Nelson? Sure. <laughs> yes. But it's like a light switch goes off and it's like, oh, that's right. I punch harder than this guy. Let me just hit him back. So, again, this is another one I do not think that the new gloves will matter. I think somebody's going down. And it's, it's all because of Steve. If Steve's going to lose, I think he's going to lose by getting knocked out. If he wins, he's going to put somebody's lights out and they're going to be limp on the floor. It's not going to have to be an accumulation of damage. But this guy, it's one-shot KO power. And when we're talking about betting finishes and fights not to go the distance, henceforth, from this show, we spoke about it this week, you got to have one legitimate power to really bet on these finishes because the numbers don't lie this year. Since they introduced those gloves and since the scoring's been funky, we've seen more and more fights go over. Steve Garcia bucks that trend. I think he's still an underfighter. So give me Steve in this one. I think he finally hands Kyle his long-awaited loss, and he's been dodging for three fights. <laughs> I have cashed on one, two, three, four, five. I've cashed on Steve Garcia's last six fights. The Ontiveros, I ju- we just played it not to go the distance. Cash, mm-hmm. the Machate, uh, played it not to go the distance. Hooper, not to go the distance. Then I switched to the uh, knockouts, which have mm-hmm. gone. As much as I love riding the trend, we've been doing a great job on some of the fighters. Man, this one has me, this one has me a little bit worried on the Garcia by KO. I'm going to ride with it one more time just because I'm so in the money with this play on Garcia and the KO. I'm even going to get very more specific. Kyle Nelson, we know, can clinch. I can see Kyle Nelson either desperately trying to shoot in for a clinch 
or he gets wobbled, so he tries to clinch. Garcia lands a beautiful body shot and follows it up with the KO. I think Kyle Nelson's body's going to be a little bit exposed when he jumps in, and we've seen Garcia with some nasty yes. shots to the body. Um, not just like, oh, good volume over the course of three rounds. No, one shot, you're like you're down. So I think Kyle Nelson leaves his body open. Garcia hits him there. And then eventually he gets the KO. Would I be stunned if Kyle Nelson clips him and finishes him? No, just because that's how Garcia rolls. And mm -hmm. credit to Kyle Nelson. I, his luck is going to run out. I like this is he got the gift of gifts when he fought Blake Builder, who fought like an idiot. I went back and watched this Padilla fight. I still have no idea how Kyle Nelson won that fight. Yeah. Like it, it was, it's it it's not going down as one of the all time worst decisions, but it's pretty bad. And then he clips Algio like everyone does, and he does get the finish. I thought it was an early stoppage, but credit to Kyle Nelson. Um, he got a, a ref that was looking out for Algio, and, you know, if he does it again, he could absolutely get it. But the pick for me is going to be Steve Garcia, but I'm biased. I cashed this bet many, many times in a row. If I lose on this one, I'm still up on my Steve Garcia. But if you haven't been following that trend, I, I, would, I wouldn't say now is the time uh, to jump in on it. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, Jessica Andrade and Natalia Silva. Um, I I didn't I didn't understand how bad Jessica Andrade's situation financially is outside of the the octagon. I feel terrible um, for her. It sounds like she's had some rough um, rough people uh, in her lives, and so you know, 2023 we kind of joked it was like the divorce tour. Um, I mean, she's fighting. Lauren Murph, Aaron Blanchfield, Jan, Tatiana Suarez, and Mackenzie Dern in a year. That is a that's a lifetime uh, worth of fights. So she's only had one this year. Um, very, very close fight against Marina Rodriguez, and she's fighting. Uh, I was on the show with Clinton. I said, I think Natalia Silva may have the highest approval percentage of anybody. Name one, name, name anybody who's like, no, I don't like Natalia <laughs> Silva. You, you know who really bothers me? Natalia, Natalia. Silva. <laughs> um, like, you know who I hate you? watching fight? <laughs> Natalia Silva. I can do without her. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you think? You've been all aboard the Natalia Silva train, and I, I completely get it. I know you've profited very, very handsomely mm -hmm. recently. What are you doing in this one? I mean, I, I also made the mistakes with Natalia Silva in the beginning of thinking that she was some knockout artist. Well, she's not. Uh, she got set up pretty good for two finishes there. Teresa Blada, we called that fight, I mean, to a T that she was going to get tired and she got worked in the third. Okay. But again, it was a patient chip away, chip away performance. Victoria real Leonardo, who we just saw that we pegged her. She is one that will give you the finish because if she's losing, she's like, I'm done. I'm going home. And she went home and she went home quick. Then she walks into a veteran and Andrea Lee and that fight again, from the very beginning, you're like, I know Andrea Lee was beat up, but you saw Natalia just do what, everything she had to do to win. Okay. Again, in her next fight, same thing again. With Jessica, I think this is going to be the same thing. Uh, Natalia hasn't had a height advantage yet, I don't believe, in her last four fights. She She's taller than I think every fight. I, I don't know why. I just picture yeah. this really, really short. And then she's always yeah. the same height. <laughs> you think <laughs> that like Andrade would be bigger, this big marauder, but she's got what two inches on her, I believe. Yeah. Um, and when they faced off, it's pretty evident that Natalia has the bigger frame here. It's it's pretty evident. That being said, I'm not worried about the knockout in this. I love I, to me it's Natalia by decision. If the grappling gets going, I could see it being worrisome, but the footwork from Natalia Silva is going to be a massive problem for Jessica Andrade. Jessica's going to try to cut off the cage, and if she gets flat-footed when she's chasing Natalia Silva, Silva's going to just stick her and move. She's got great left-to-right movement. It's not always forward-back. She doesn't circle in the same direction. She'll cut different angles, and that's going to really frustrate Andrade, and I can see her looping in and getting caught with some really good shots. So I like the over in this fight. I like Natalia Silva by decision in this fight. I think she passes this test, not without some adversity, because Andrade is going to bring the fight. But I just don't see her getting caught and finished. And I kind of think that's Jessica's win condition here, is to really hurt her and take her off her game. And I don't think she's going to be able to catch her. 
I'll go opposite with you here. I'll mm-hmm. I'll I'll take Andrade. I think Andrade is going to do some things uh, that Natalia Silva definitely hasn't seen before. First off, she's going to land some late kicks, and Natalia mm-hmm. Silva hasn't faced anybody that's going to land any type of late kicks. Um, Arujo was able to clinch and get some control time against her. Did she do anything with it? No. Was Silva able to weather that storm and win on the feet? Yeah, but I think Andrade. I think there's a takedown potential on Silva. I think there's um, some control time. And just just the other thing is um, Andrade can make this a brawl. She's great at doing that. Um, We watched her do it against uh, Marina Rodriguez, and I really think that she got the the nod because she finished that last round with this flurry, and it was just this brawl type type of thing. And if she can get Natalia Silva just a little bit flustered and get it, Get it to where Silva's out of her comfort zone. I think the experience of Andrade can pay some dividends here. I, I also just think that just the price is just so crazy. Mm-hmm. The, the price, like minus 300 against just count Andrade. I, to me, that's yeah. Silva could win, but I'm not willing to pay uh, minus, you know, 300 on it. But uh, you and I have sniffed out overs on this one, mostly because of what Silva has, you know, kind of shown in her last couple ones. So, um, this fight to go the distance uh, could be could be a good one, but yeah, for fun, yeah. we'll go we'll go head to head. I like I like this one as a head to head. This will be fun. Yeah, this would be a great one. Great fight That's to good. to be to be uh, to be cheering on on opposite sides. Uh, last chance, guys. We're gonna do the main event here. If you could please help us out with the algorithm, hit the like button. Just leave us a comment, even if it's just an emoji, like the thumbs up emoji. Uh, that would be fine. And then flex uh, emoji. Um, I don't know if there's a Dylan Bud kind of like scale emoji, like <laughs> Ky- the Kyle Nelson. If there was a way, <laughs> guys that miss weight, um, on, it, it's it. something in the comments section. It really helps us out. Let us know what fights uh, you like for this weekend. All right, Gilbert Burns, Sean Brady, main event. Who you got? Going Sean Brady. What's his record? Sixteen Let's... and one. There's the one. I always thought this guy was a legitimate contender, even before the loss. Now, something that me and Andy both like to do is that when these undefeated fighters, again, he says it all the time, and I agree, that that nobody's going to retire undefeated. There's Khabib, and that's it. Okay? You got to get your loss. You have to pay your dues in this sport. You're not going to be undefeated and run to the title. Even John Jones had a DQ loss before he won the title. Like uh, you have to have this loss, this learning experience. <laughs> it amazing. makes you work harder. It makes you analyze your game. You learn more from losing than you do winning. I don't care what anybody says. It's great to win, but every once in a while you need to get kicked in the teeth and get up off the canvas. And that's what Sean Brady did. The other thing is, is that Gilbert Burns is looking at the second part of his career at this point. And he doesn't have to admit it on the microphone for me to see this. He doesn't have to come out and say it. He's on podcast. He's sponsoring betting apps. It's all related. They're picking stuff. He's on Moicano's podcast, which is always a show. You know, it's not really a UFC content show. It's Moicano. It's a show. He's talking about competing in grappling matches. The uh, 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 the interviewers are asking him about grappling matches, not UFC fights. I mean, what is the writing is just on the wall. You can't do this forever. This is still not his new weight division he should be. He's a really a lightweight. And I think Brady is really coming into his prime. I don't see Brady getting caught with a submission. And I also don't think that Gilbert throws the volume on the feet to hurt Brady like Bilal did. People can give Bilal all the crap that they want to give him. But the bottom line is, is when Bilal can put volume on you. That was like, you know, everybody's saying, Brady got knocked out by Bilal. That's a bad look. Well, was it a one-punch knockout? Was he struck by the power? No, it was an accumulation of shots. And Brady was doing fairly well in that first round. It just, at some point, you can't take it anymore. Um, I think Brady wins this fight pretty much everywhere. I just can't buy into Gilbert at this age, at this point in his career. Give me the young line to take out the old line here and move up in the division. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I, these these older fighters, man, when they seem like they seem like they've just lost a step, that's the time. Um, so he was winning against Jack Dallow, fell apart. Um, loses against Blah Muhammad, has a really bad you know shoulder injury. Here's my other problem: like 
Jorge Masvidal, that's your last win. I mean, Masvidal was gone. Not <laughs> was, a real that fight. was his last fight. Wasn't a real fight. Yeah, it wasn't a real fight. Uh, he chokes out Neil Magny, who, I mean, let's face it, Neil Magny just got killed by Morales, was on his deathbed until Mike mm. Malott had the gas of all gases, <laughs> barely beats Phil Rowe by a split decision. That's not looking good. And, you know, uh, Neil Magny is older than Stephen Thompson. Decision. Can't, you know, can't implement the wrestling. Tyrone Woodley, Damian Maya. These guys are 35 years old and older. That's who he's beating. He's not beating guys that are young, <laughs> younger than that. Um, I'm with you, the Brady. I, I love the, um, I love when guys finally get that first loss. And, and I think we did see the switch get, get flipped. Uh, Gaslam, he, mm-hmm. he annihilated Gaslam. That was not competitive. Um, say what you want about Gaslam, but Gaslam's a real UFC fighter and Brady dominated. So I'm with you on that one. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're in agreement that the Sean Brady over, over Gilbert Burns. So man, just getting tired against, against Jack Della, Della getting knocked out. Now this is a five round fight. Ooh, oh man. Five scared. rounds. Eight, yeah. Yeah. That's eight, uh, father time is undefeated. I know it's a cliched statement, but. You know, I'm sure if you gathered up all the 38 year olds over the past seven years that fought in the UFC and you bet against them all, you probably have a pretty good record. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. So, all right, guys, it's going to do it for us. Thanks for joining us. Like button, comment. Good luck on your plays. College football, grab it for 15 bucks of wager talk. We'll see everyone later. Take care, guys.